Uh, and Simon, let's just finish out the podcast as we do each and every week with some games. Uh, let's do first This Week in History. <laughs> All right, some short questions. Short, sharp, and quick questions this week in history, Dan Barrett. May 28, 1982. I'll try and say that again, 1982. What did film critic <laughs> yeah. Leonard Moulton do on this night? Look, I mean, Leonard Moulton, outside of the movie guides that he used to publish, and I think, I don't know if that's still around. The I Bible. It. Yeah, the Bible. No, they're not. No, they finished publishing. But I used to read these. I had a shelf of like maybe a decade's worth of the Leonard Moulton movie guide and I would read them back to forth like novels and I, that's where I get my encyclopedic knowledge of all things cinema from, Dan Barrett. Yeah, I'm looking on my shelf. I can't. I used to have a couple of them, but, yeah, I must have said goodbye to them some time ago. Uh, yeah, yeah, look, you know him for them, but also he was uh, the film critic on Entertainment Tonight. Considering this is 1982, which is roughly when Entertainment Tonight launched, I don't know the exact date for it, but... I'm going to say maybe it was when he did his first review on Entertainment Tonight. Well done, my friend. Yes, that's exactly right. <sighs> Leonard Moulton premiered on Entertainment Tonight, which was the go-to entertainment show back in the day. I remember vividly seeing the first images from The Breakfast Club and from Gremlins and uh, Temple of Doom on on the uh, the Entertainment Tonight show. It was must-watch TV. It used to be on very late on Sunday nights. I used to videotape it. I used to set the timer and record Entertainment Tonight so I could catch up with what was happening around the world in cinema, well, at least in Hollywood, um, overnight. So, yeah, terrific show. And Morton. I feel bad because a few weeks back we did a uh, our favourite film critics um, bit for intermission and I didn't mention Leonard Morton and probably – none were as influential in those early days as the Leonard Bolton's movie guidebook. So uh, yeah, I don't, apologies. I don't think Bolton's particularly a great critic, though. I think he's a very interesting person to hear talk about film, but I don't really like mm. his criticism. Tough call. Dan, May 30, 2003. This is uh, in a week where Pixar have proven to be in real problems, having offloaded 14% of their work force um impossible to believe that that could be the case um when you consider that on march 30 2003 this pixar blockbuster debuted in theaters can you remember what was the uh, the big cartoon of the time so look there was a period of my life where uh based on people i was dating at that time uh i used to watch a lot of animated films at the cinema um <laughs> uh, yep. this 2003 feels around the time that that relationship ended, but I can't help but feel that I saw one more film in the cinema without her, and that was The Incredibles. Could that be it? Ooh. Bum, bum. Oh. And the Incredibles was slightly before that. It was Finding Nemo. Oh, okay. The film premiered in Los Angeles at the El Capitan Theatre on May 18, but then opened in theatres. You know what else was out that week? Mm. Marky Mark Wahlberg in The Italian Job and the horror film Wrong Turn. Uh, both debuted the same day as Finding Nemo, May 30, 2003. I've definitely, here's one especially I definitely saw you. The Italian Job, but yeah, I can't say that I've seen yes. Nemo or... yeah. Wrong You've turn. never seen Nemo? No. Wow, Dan Barrett, that's quite a thing to say. You know to why? Live audience. Because, Mate, because right. I was an adult and I was dating someone with more discerning taste. Uh, yeah, clearly not too much discerning taste if you were, they were dating you. May 31, 2004, which cartoon character debuts on Britain's Channel 5? May 31, 2004. Oh, God, I was going to say Peppa Pig, but that just seems too old for Peppa Pig. I feel that might have been like a you know, 2010. So look, I'll, I'll say Peppa Pig. I don't think that's true, though. It was Peppa Pig. Oh, okay. And it was it was, it was was voiced at the time by Harley Fiona Riley, better known as, as Harley Bird. She's an English actress, and she was Peppa Pig for a record-breaking 13 years, uh, only finished up a couple of years ago in 2020. So, um, yes, you're right, Peppa Pig, friend of the show. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, P Peppa Pig fans will be very excited to know that the animated short that debuted as part of Peppa Pig's cinema party, where they all got into a van and celebrated a birthday driving around the neighbourhoods, uh, that has just premiered on ABC Kids. So, you know, get onto your iPhone and, and give that a watch. <laughs> all right, time for the birthday quiz. No, not happy birthday. No, not that. Please, no, not happy 
Amen. Amen. All right, this is a tough one. And if you've seen our Facebook page where I've already put the image of this week's birthday buddies, you'll know what a, a vast difference it is between the four of them. Let's go with this. May 27, 1936, the late, the great Lewis Gossett Jr. May 31, 1965, Brooke Shields. May 31, 1960, one Chris Elliott, funny man Chris Elliott from Schitt's Creek and many other things. There's something about Mary. And then June 1, 1926, the beautiful Marilyn Monroe, one of cinema's great beauties, if not the greatest. Uh, what could these birthday buddies all have in common? It's about a kind of role they've played. This one's a tough one, Dan Bad. I, I'm not holding out much hope for you getting this one. Okay, here's the thing. If you're going to throw Brooke Shields and Chris Elliott onto a list for me, I'm going to look at that and yeah. find the immediate connection. So Brooke okay. Shields, best known for appearing in a little film called Mother of the Bride on Netflix, but also people will be startled to find out that early in her career, she was shipwrecked on a film called The Blue Lagoon. Uh, Chris Elliott, right. of whom you know has appeared in many, many fine productions over the years, nothing finer than him appearing in Cabin Boy, uh, which I believe halfway through has a sequence where the ship goes down and he's out there on a raft. Uh, then you've got Marilyn Monroe, who I know was in a movie, and I can't think of the name of the film, but I know that she ends up, um, I, I think they befriend a man that's like turned up like along a river on a raft. So I'm going to say all of these actors have appeared in movies where rafts and um, crashed rafts have played a significant role. <laughs> My God, Dan Barrett, I am, you, you are so close. You cannot believe how close you are. I'm going to give you huge props for even going down that path. I gave you a bit of a visual clue there with the with the the, the four pictures we use as part of the birthday quiz. I don't look at Let that. Let me run through it. And I'll, I'll, I'll come back to Lou Gossett Jr. Now, the connection here is, you're right, they've all been stranded. They've all been stranded <laughs> okay. on a de on, in some way or another. Now, Brooke Shields, yes, you're absolutely right, in The Blue Lagoon, the coming-of-age romance novel that was turned into the, the um, film of the early 80s. Chris Elliott was in Cabin Boy and was stranded in Cabin Boy, but I'm more thinking of the character he played in The Last Man of Earth, the Will Forte series. He played yeah. a castaway called Glenn living on a desert island. Thumbs down. Now, here's a tough one. June 1, 1926, Marilyn Monroe. Now, her final film was called Something's Got to Give, shot in 1962. It was a film where she played a woman stranded on a desert island who was found by a group of American soldiers and then taken back to uh, America, where she became a star because of her life on this desert island. It starred Dean Martin and Sid Charisse. Now, it was never released. It was shut down because of a cost overrunner, because of the problems they were having with Marilyn Monroe. Dean Martin stepped in and demanded that Marilyn stay on. Uh, they were about to start reshooting and she passed away. It's one of the great unreleased films of all time. Technically, it has been made. It is still a screen film, but she played a castaway in that. And Lou Gossett Jr., played a stranded alien opposite Dennis Quaid in the film Enemy Mine. They were stranded on a distant planet and had to learn to live together. So this week, it's all about being uh, marooned, about being stranded. Yeah, I've never felt so, more in touch with a theme ever. Anyway, folks, let's get out of here. You were so close. <laughs> Folks, this has been Screen Watching. Uh, my name's Dan Barrett, joined by Simon Foster. If you like this podcast, uh, review it, like it, share it with your friends. Uh, we're on the YouTube, we're on the various podcast platforms. You can find us quite easily to watch or listen to, sometimes both. Uh, you can find me specifically at alwaysbewatching.com. I do a newsletter there where I talk about TV and movie news and all sorts of gear-related stuff on screens you can watch. Simon, you do stuff as well? Yeah, over on the screen, hyphen space.net page, you'll see my rantings in a bit of long form film journalism. God, we need more of it. And it's quite a good read, Screen Space, when I actually get around to it. Uh, yes, and do check us out at Screen Watching Podcast, at Screen Watching, or email us, Screen Watching Podcast at gmail.com uh, across all our socials. Uh, it's been a good one, Dan Barrett. It's been a long one. Is it still like Thursday when we record this? This seems to have gone a long time. The sun's moved since we started doing this. Yeah, it's Thursday, but 2025. Folks, this has been Screen Watching. <laughs> watching we'll be back next week with more of this nonsense we'll see you then